Hello there. A very ha happy Sunday to you all and I hope you're all doing OK. Um, we'll be here for the next hour guiding you through. I've got a Jelly Babies mug with a cup of Yorkshire tea tonight. How are you doing? Hmm. Well, it was very good. Could have had a whiskey contact. And I've also got some cheesy nibbles as well. Do you like them cheesy nibbles? So I'm going to have a full of them now. Mm, very nice indeed. Welcome to the quiz. Pen and paper job tonight. So grab a sheet of paper, grab a pen. Uh, let us know your comments and your scores during the, the hour as well. You can email me at chrisccbenson at hotmail.co.uk. That's chrisccbenson at hotmail.co.uk. And if you like the quiz, we can donate. Feel free to donate to this week's charity, which is um, www.justgiving.com forward slash chris and eric quiz night five. Or if you want to pick a previous one. Chris and Eric, quiz night two, three, four, take your pick. We've supported St. John's Ambulance, we've supported Age UK, Bradford Hospitals, NHS Trust, Macmillan Cancer Support, all in recent weeks. And on Wednesday's smartphone quiz, we'll be raising money for Mind. So a brilliant fundraising cause on Wednesday, and that's for the smartphone quiz coming up in a few days' time. Um, right, don't forget, email chrissybenton at hotmail.co.uk if you've got any comments. Great to have your company once again. Do you know the funny thing, Bob, last week we did this, and it didn't really get the greatest kind of um, viewing live. But you know what? So many people have watched the quiz uh, pre-recorded and watched it delayed. Unbelievable. More have done that than what, what watched it live. So I dare say a lot will do that once again. Anyway, great to have your company. I'll try and squeeze in as much as I can in the next hour. Um, so the first round is science and nature. Science and nature. How are you on science and nature? Well, we'll soon find out. Ten questions on. Oh, Helen Walker says, the walkers in Low Moor. Uh, are primed and ready. Good evening to you all in Lomo. Uh, Helen, I hope you're keeping safe and thank you for your email. Right. Um, so, science and nature is the first round. Are we all ready? You have to shout loud so I can hear you. Are we all ready? Yep, we all ready? Good, good. Right. Question number one Ganymede is a moon of which planet? So that's question one in science and nature. I'm presuming you all have a pen and paper handy because it's a pen and paper quiz. Uh, but if you haven't and you want any questions repeating, go and find a pen and paper now and join in. Because uh, I can see there's a few more listeners, a few more viewers that are just find us. So if you want to join in, uh, pen and paper job, grab a sheet of paper. The first question, Ganymede is a moon of which planet? That's your first question in the science and nature round, okay? And we'll squeeze in whatever we can. Question number two. In science and nature, where in its body are a lobster's teeth? So where in its body are a lobster's teeth? And we're going to get about halfway uh, and then we'll do some marking probably about half past nine. See how you're all getting on so far. And then we'll do the second half of the quiz. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, good. Of course it does. Um, question number three. What is the primary function of red blood cells? So what is the primary function of red blood cells. If you've just joined us, it's not too late. Drop uh, drop me an email at chriscbenson at hotmail.co.uk and I will read out any questions you've missed. Pen and paper quiz right here till 10 o'clock. Great to have your company. So uh, question three, what is the primary function of red blood cells? That's your third question in this first round science and nature. Okay. Um, question number four, which gas is predominant in the Earth's atmosphere? Go on, you know that one, don't you? You do. You do know that one. Question number four, which gas is predominant in the Earth's atmosphere? That is number four. I can see there's a few more just joining us now. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'll do. Just so I'm kind, go and get a sheet of paper and I will read out the ones that you've missed. If you've missed any, no problem at all. Come and join in. You're only a few questions in on the science and nature round. So number four, which gas is predominant in the Earth's atmosphere? That's your fourth question in the science and nature round. Uh, and I'll catch you up with the first three in just a moment. How does that? How is that for a plan? Did you see me on uh, uh, doing the Amarillo dance with Eric this week? Have a look at that on Twitter. It was, uh, we were on the Northwest Tonight compilation. Brilliant. Great, great montage. Um, question number five. What is a group of alligators called? So what is a group of alligators called? That's your fifth question in Science and Nature. There's a few more joining us. What's Vandervolt must be rubbish. Everyone's flicking over tonight. Uh, so what is a group of alligators called? That's number five in your Science and Nature round. All right. Uh, number six for you now. Good luck, everyone. How many chambers does the human heart contain? 
So how many chambers does the human heart contain? That's your sixth one in the science and nature round. Uh, four to go. Are you confident? Eric has also done a pre-recording uh, with five football questions coming up. So hopefully you'll be able to hear his recording because he's worked so hard on the questions. We might just do it after this round. Uh, so Eric's football quiz questions coming up as well. Um, so number six, once again, how many chambers does the human heart contain? Number seven, what does DNA stand for? So what does DNA stand for? That's a great quiz question. It always comes up regularly as a quiz question. Now, what does DNA stand for? That is number seven for you in the Science and Nature round. All right. Very good evening to you if you're just joining. Welcome. Live pen and paper quiz till 10 o'clock. Chris Benson here. And on Wednesday nights on this channel, you can catch me and my son Eric hosting a live smartphone quiz. Don't you dare miss it. Subscribe. That's the easiest way so you can see everything pop up. Uh, question number eight. What is the largest artery in the human body called? So what is the largest artery in the human body called? Richard Ryan uh, said, just arrived, Chris, with Jameson's this week. I'm loading your picture up, Richard and Christine. Let's see if it works. And I feel like I should be having a whiskey now. Uh, I suppose it's never too late. I can have one afterwards, can't I? It's only nine o'clock. It's not loaded a picture up. Oh, did you send a picture? Anyway, I'll, I'll imagine the uh, the Jamesons, I will. Um, Helen Walker says, I recommend Gangs of London. Thanks uh, for the boring nights without your quiz. I'm watching Coronation Street on Britbox. I'm up to uh, the show. They've got best of episodes. I'm up to 1995. Jack and Vera have just took over the Rovers. That is what, genuinely what I'm watching today. Uh, but uh, I have heard gang, Gangs of London is meant to be good. Um, all right. So number eight again. What is the largest artery in the human body called? That was number eight. Number nine. What is the centre of an atom called? So number nine, what is the centre of an atom called? Come on, you know that one, don't you? You do. You do know that one. And if you're playing along uh, on demand, pre-recorded after Sunday night, let me know. Drop me an email. Uh, you can email me at chrissybenson at hotmail.co.uk. I'd love to get an email on Monday afternoon when I'm uh, at home and thinking someone's just done the quiz. So if you are doing it pre-recorded, do let us know. Uh, number 10, what type of lens is a magnifying glass is it concave or convex so what type of lens is a magnifying glass is it concave or convex all right 50 50 on that one and for those that were just started late because there was a few of you i'll repeat the first few number one in this science and nature round ganymede is a moon of which planet so ganymede is a moon of which planet that was your first one uh, number two, where in its body are a lobster's teeth? That was your second one. Where in its body are a lobster's teeth? Uh, number three, what is the primary function of red blood cells? What is the primary function of red blood cells? Uh, number four, which gas is predominant in the Earth's atmosphere? Five, what is a group of alligators called? Uh, and if you need any more repeating, just let me know. That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Um, Anne Marie Craven's in the house again. Um, Hi, Eric and Amory in Preston. Thanks ever so much for doing these. Keeping my mind active as I can't work on the coffee van at the moment. Cheers. Well, I tell you what, and, and, uh, I keep meaning to check out the Bruce Springsteen thing that you're watching as well. Actually, is it on YouTube or is it on Facebook? I think it's just on Facebook, isn't it? But um, And I need to check out his new album, the, uh, the Country one. I haven't listened to that yet, but good to have your, your company tonight, Amory and Eric. So for you, it says, hi, Chris from Soph and Hell's playing in East Bialy. Merry Christmas uh, to you both uh, over in East Bialy. I hope you're enjoying the quiz. Um, I should say, do you like my nails? My daughter, Josie, it's the second time I've had them painted this week. And it feels quite weird as a 38-year-old having your nails painted, but it's the second time of the week. And I'll be honest, it's quite nice not having pale nails. I quite like it. So I've left them on. Sod it. It's isolation. I'll, 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 when everything goes back to normal, I'll have to take them off. But I quite like it at 38. Never had it done before. Anyway, that was round one. Are you happy with that? Of course you are. I should now find Eric's football questions. Now, if you can't hear them, if you can't hear them, I'll, I've got the questions to hand so I can read them out anyway. But Eric has given them a good go reading it. Oh, he started. He started. Cut back, Eric. He started already. Right. I'll turn up the sound. This is Eric reading the questions. He really wanted to get involved tonight. So five football questions coming up. Multiple choice. Uh, I'll turn the sound up. Let's see if you can hear Eric. Here we go. Hello, Daddy. Welcome to the football. 
choice quiz round round one. Question number one. What is the capacity of Old Trafford to the nearest thousand? A. 70,000. B. 72,000. Or C. 74,000. <laughs> So that question again, in case you didn't hear it, Eric said, what is the capacity to the nearest thousand of Old Trafford? Eric's researched these, don't blame me. Uh, to the nearest thousand, is it A, 70,000, B, 72,000, or C, 74,000? So the, to, near, to the nearest thousand, what is the capacity of Old Trafford? All right, that's your first one. Uh, Eric, can you carry on for us, please? Thank you, Eric. It's like he's here, isn't it? So question two, um, who is the current captain of Bradford City? Is it A, Clayton Donaldson, B, Richard O'Donnell, or C, Hope Akpan? Clayton Donaldson, Richard O'Donnell, or Hope Akpan? That's your second one in the football round. Three more to go. Eric, what's the next one? Thank you, Eric. So when was Knox County formed? Was it A, 1901, B, 1871, or C, 1862? A, 1901, B, 1871, or C, 1862? Two more to go in this round. Number four, please, Eric. Right, so what club has Neymar, Mbappe and Cavani all played for? Neymar, Mbappe and Cavani all played for. Is it Bayern Munich, PSG or Barcelona? Bayern Munich, PSG or Barcelona? Right, one more please, Eric, take it away. He's a pro, isn't he? So who went unbeaten, then lost to Watford in the Premier League uh, this season? Was it A, Chelsea, B, Liverpool, or C, Manchester City? Chelsea, Liverpool, or Manchester City? Uh, Tony Holt says, lobster's teeth uh, at the dentist. Oh, right, there we go. Hello, Tony. Uh, uh, what, um, is it sounds like a name of a beer, that lobster's teeth, doesn't it? Um, anyway, I hope you're doing all right. Good to hear from you. I hope you've had a good weekend. Although, kind of every day is a weekend at the moment, isn't it? So, that's the football round done. Should we do some general knowledge? Yeah, let's do some general knowledge. Don't forget, you can get in touch at chriscbenson at hotmail.co.uk. And you can make a donation if you wish at justgiving.com forward slash Chris and Eric Quiz Night 5. And the money is going to the British Red Cross this week. Even a couple of quid if you like it. Throw it in the kitty. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Right. Um, so you know how to email. You know that there's a quiz on Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Don't miss it. Spread the word. Smartphone quiz then. And if you like these pen and paper ones, let us know. We'll keep doing it as long as you want them. Um, right. Round two is general knowledge. So we'll probably swap in two rounds time, I think. Two rounds time and then we'll swap so far and we'll find out how we're doing and then we'll do second half. So question number one. In round two, good luck. Uh, well, technically round three, actually, we've included the football one. So who co-founded Microsoft alongside Paul Allen? So who co-founded Microsoft alongside Paul Allen? I think you'll know that one, won't you? So I'll let you think for about 10 seconds because I think you'll be all right. I'm going to have a bit of me brew. Mm. Very good. Right, there we go. Alex Hyman says, hi, Chris. It's Alex again from Tenet. Hope you're well. Oh, you're well, Alex. As well. You did pretty well on the scores last week. I think you're going to win it this week, so don't let me down. Um, question two. Surname will do for this one. Surname will do. Which musical composer wrote the New World Symphony? So question two. Which musical composer wrote the New World Symphony? That's your second one in this round. All right. Uh, 
Oh, look at that. Hi from Sarah and Mark. Alexander's mum and dad from Howden Clough Under 8. Very good evening to you. How are you doing on the questions so far? Hope you're enjoying it. We do a smartphone one on a Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. You'll love that one if you love this. So hope to see subscribe to the channel and you'll you'll see the notifications pop up. Right, next question. Question number three. Which musical is based on a novel written by Victor Hugo? So question number three, which musical is based on a novel written by Victor Hugo? That's your third one in this round, general knowledge. Great, great to have all your company tonight, really is. And don't forget, your friends can tune in afterwards. It's gone YouTube all the time, like a lot of people did last week. So you can play whenever you want. What you could do is play with the rest of the family and watch it again. And then you'll look like you know all the answers, won't you? That's a good idea. Question number four. What is the Greek equivalent of the Roman god Mercury? So number four, what is the Greek equivalent of the Roman god Mercury? That's number four. Are you going for cheesy nibbles, love? Are you having cheesy nibbles? You can't nick one of kids' chocolate bars. You can't do that. What if they watch the video? No, no, you nicked it. Nicky, what it whispers out the well. Like how do you know he don't like him? Like no, but he's not. He's not going to know now, is he? Oh. Anyway, number five for you. In the Tour de France, what colour jersey is given to the fastest overall rider? Wait, who is under the age of twenty-five? So, in the Tour de France, what colour jersey is given to the fastest overall rider? who is under the age of 25. So that's your fifth one in this round. How are we all doing so far? Maybe it's not the obvious answer, that one. Um, Anne-Marie Craven says, Hungry Hearts, they usually do live all-night Bruce events, but they're now streaming to living rooms every now and then. www.hungryheartevents.com And they're doing a 24-hour bruce next Saturday from 1pm. What do you mean, Bruce Forsyth or... Good game. Nice. That'd be good, wouldn't it? 24 hours of the generation game. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Um, right, next question. In Charles Dickens's Oliver Twist, this is number six. In Charles Dickens's Oliver Twist, what was the real name of the Artful Dodger? So in Charles Dickens's Oliver Twist, what was the real name of the Artful Dodger? All right, that's number six in this round. No Googling, remember? I'm sure you're not. I trust you all. Cheese and nibble going in. Right. Four more. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Number seven. This is a good question. Which part of Charlie Chaplin's body did he get insured? I presume it means which part of his body did he get insured more than the rest of him? Uh, so which part of Charlie Chaplin's body did he get insured? Didn't he die? I think off the top of my head. I think he died on Christmas Day, 1977, I think. I can't Google. I can't I can't Google whilst I'm on this. I think it was Christmas Day, 1977, I've got in my head. I mean, I hope he got his presents before he, before he died, but we'll, we'll, we'll never know, will we? Um, question number eight. What was the name of the pet dog in the US TV sitcom Frasier? So what was the name of the pet dog in the US... TV sitcom Frasier. Apparently, it's coming back, isn't it? The, it's coming back. Is it this year or next year? They're bringing back Frasier, apparently. Um, Louise Callahan says, hello from the Francophiles in Scarborough. Uh, Louise, Fred and Alex playing tonight in Scarborough. Alex is wearing his Bayern Munich top instead of Brian Bradford City. Enjoying the quiz. Alex sounds like my son, Eric, wearing different football kits every day. And Eric's not bothered where he wears PSG or Wigan or Bradford or Liverpool. He's not bothered at all. So, Alex, hope you're enjoying the quiz. You definitely won. I think the prize of being the furthest team away tonight. Um, so, number nine. In the London version of Monopoly, Vine Street, Marlborough Street and Bow Street are which colour? So in the London version of Monopoly, Vine Street, Marlborough Street and Bow Street are which colour? All right, that's number nine in this round. Thank you for your company, all of you tonight. Pen and paper job till 10 o'clock tonight here live on YouTube. Uh, and then the last one is true or false? True or false? True or false? 
the distance as the crow flies between Paris and Amsterdam is greater than the distance between Land's End and John O'Groats. So let me repeat that. Let it sink in. So true or false, the distance as the crow flies between Paris and Amsterdam is greater than the distance between Land's End and John O'Groats. True or false? Um, oh, dear. Uh, Anne and John in Southport say, where's her indoors tonight? We're struggling without her. Oh, she's having a, she's having one at Kids Whispers. She was reading Thursday's Daily Mail, I think. I don't know. Ring her. She might, she might be able to help you. Ring her on WhatsApp um, if there's any you're stuck on. Uh, I'm not telling you answers. But anyway, have one, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Um, right. I think what we'll do is the next round before we swap, and it's words. So it's words. I'm going to give you a word and I'm going to give you three possible definitions as to what the word means. Which is the correct meaning of the word? OK, so I'm going to give you three possible definitions for the word. Which one is it? A, B or C. Simple as. All right. So number one, if someone is capernoited, that's C-A-P-E-R-N-O-I-T-E-D, capernoited. Are they A, big-nosed, B, slightly drunk, or C, bald? I suppose any of them could have been me, couldn't it? Uh, if someone is capernoited, are they A, big-nosed, B, slightly drunk, or C, bald? Which one is it? That's your first one in the words round. Which one is it? Have a guess. You might as well. Uh, number two, if something is fabiform, so if something is fabiform, F-A-B-I-F-O-R-M, fabiform, is it something that's A, shaped like a bean, B, a pleasing shape, <clears throat> steady on, or C, something that's triangular? So if something is fabiform, is it A, shaped like a bean? B, a pleasing shape, or C, triangular. OK, that's your second one in the words, round. You might as well have a guess. Number three, what is a yaffingale? What is a yaffingale? Let's just spell it. Check it with bully. Y-A-F-F-I-N-G-A-L-E gets you £17. What's a yaffingale? Is it A, a type of antique furniture? B, a green woodpecker? Or C, is it a member of the National Trust for Scotland? So a type of antique furniture, B, a green woodpecker, or C, a member of the National Trust for Scotland. Which one is it? That's number three. Number four, if something is gentacular, if something is gentacular, J-E-N-T-A-C, U-L-A-R, gentacular. Is it something that's A, almost perpendicular? B, something that belongs to the human jaw? Or C, something relating to breakfast? Gentacular. All right, that's number four. How are you doing in this round? Multiple choice, you might as well have a guess. Uh, number five, what is a brach? What is a brach? I hope you pronounce it like that. B-R-A-C-H. B-R-A-C-H. Is it A, a female hunting hound? B, a type of hair braid? Or C, a small smoked herring? So what is a brach? A female hunting hound? B, a type of hair braid? Or C, a small smoked herring? All right. Five more in this round. Uh, Number six, if something is secular, secular, S-A-C-C-U-L-A-R, secular, is it A, the shape of a human ear, B, artificial, or C, something that's sack-like? So the shape of a human ear, B, something that's artificial, or C, something that's sack-like. That's your six one. Number seven. What is a skippet? What is a skippet? So how do you spell it? S-K-I-P-P-E-T. Skippet. Is it A, a small round box to preserve a document or a seal? 
B, is it a crossbreed of a dog, uh, a combination of half greyhound and half whippet? Or C, is it a tiny fish from the same family as the guppy? So skip it. Is it a small round box to preserve a document or a seal? B, is it a crossbreed of dog, half greyhound, half whippet? And, or is it C, a tiny fish from the same family as the guppy? So that's your seventh one. Oh, number eight. I wonder how you all get this one, right? Number eight. Uh, of what is Mariology the study? Mariology. Let me spell it. M-A-R-I-O-L-O-G-Y. Mariology. Uh, is it A, tidal levels, B, the Virgin Mary, or C, is it the behaviour of young people who have grown up playing computer games? So Mariology, what is it the study of? Is it A, tidal levels? B, the Virgin Mary, or C, the behaviour of young people who have grown up playing computer games. John, you're probably quite good at this in Southport because, you, you know, you do your crosswords and stuff, right? don't you? So I suppose words like that come up. Anyway, uh, number nine, what is a paboosh? What is a paboosh? And I'll spell it. P-A-B-O-U-C-H-E. What is a paboosh? Is it A, a servant? B, a a French slang word for a stupid person, or C, a slipper or a soft shoe. So a pabouche, is it a servant, a French slang word for a stupid person, or C, a slipper or a soft shoe? I'll chew on my cheesy uh, nibbles now. One minute. Uh, Mark Walker says, are Andy and Amy on tonight, Chris? I don't know. Amy and Andy, are you on? If you are, Merry Christmas. Say hello. Um, you can also, all of you, say hello, email chrisdbenson at hotmail.co.uk. Right, number 10. What is a quack salver? So what is a quack salver? I'll spell it Q-U-A-C-K-S-A-L-V-E-R. What is a quack salver? Is it A, someone who falsely claims to have medical skills? B, someone who rescues birds for a living? Or C, is it a deep sea diver who salvages ancient artifacts? So let me repeat that. What is a quack salver? Have a guess. You might as well. Is it someone who falsely claims to have medical skills? B, someone who rescues birds for a living? Or is it C, a deep sea diver who salvages ancient artifacts? All right. Um, I'm going to give you a minute or so to check your answers and then I'm going to start marking all the questions so far is that all right i remind you if you if you enjoy the quiz tonight donate a couple of quid don't have to be a lot just donate wherever you can to www.justgiving.com and then you can pick either forward slash chris and eric quiz night chris and eric quiz night two chris and eric quiz night three chris and eric quiz night four or chris and eric quiz night five can you believe it episode six is on wednesday we've been doing it a few weeks now haven't we you know what stay at home and we'll be back here on Wednesday to look after you. So don't worry about that. Right, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and then we'll start marking the answers so far. Is that right for a plan? Of course it is. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Um, how comp And let us know as well when we've done the answers. Set Email your scores over with your team names, and we'll see who's winning at the halfway point. That sounds like a good plan. Right. Did it, did it, did it, did it, I think that's long enough. Yes, answer time, he says. Right, sign to nature then. Coming up, good luck, everyone. Answer time, point for each answer, of course. Um, number one, Ganymede is a moon of Jupiter. Did you know that? I always think of Fireman Sam's engine. That was called Jupiter as well. I can see Jupiter from here. Uh, where in its body are a lobster's teeth? In its stomach. Did you know that one? What is the primary function of red blood cells? The primary function is to carry oxygen around the body. Which gas is predominant in the Earth's atmosphere? That's nitrogen. What is a group of alligators called? It's called a congregation, a congregation of alligators. Now you know. Uh, how many chambers does a human heart contain? That would be four. Uh, what does DNA stand for? Deoxyribonucleic acid. I'll try it again. Deoxyribonucleic acid, something like that anyway. If you put cod liver oil then you're wrong aren't you or self-raising flour but you know that's deoxyribonucleic acid or something like that um google it and you'll see the spelling if you if you're near enough for the spelling i will let you off uh, number eight the largest artery in the human body is called the aorta 
the center of an atom is called the nucleus. Uh, the type of lens that's a magnifying glass concave. What type of lens is a magnifying glass concave or convex? It's convex. So there you go. Uh, the football round next. Oh, Noel's Lane here. Hi, Amanda. Hope you're enjoying the quiz, Amanda. Uh, let us know what score you get in a few rounds' time. So Eric's answers to the football round. What is the capacity of Old Trafford to the nearest thousand? Well, Eric says it's 74,000. C, 74,000 was your answer. C, 74,000. Who is the capital city of Bradford? Uh, it's capital of Bradford City at the moment. Uh, apparently, it is C, Hope Akpam. C, Hope Akpan, Eric says. Um, look at this. He's wrote out a whole script for me there. Look at that. Uh, bless him. Uh, three, when was Notts County formed? It was C, 1862. And Eric says, apparently, I think, are they the oldest team in the world? I'm sure he said that. I think he said the oldest team in the world. Um, number four, what has Neymar, who has Neymar, Mbappe and Cavani all played for? It's B, PSG. B, PSG. Who went unbeaten uh, in the Premier League then lost to Watford? It is B, Liverpool. So, point for each chance there. We'll see how you got on. General knowledge then, round three. Uh, Bill Gates formed Microsoft alongside Paul Allen. The musical composer that wrote the New World Symphony was Dvorak. Uh, Antonin Dvorak. I mean, if you've got that as well, brilliant. Uh, the musical that's based on a novel written by Victor Hugo is Les Miserables or Les Miserables. Uh, if you're from Lancashire, the Greek equivalent of the Roman god Mercury is Hermes. Uh, if you didn't know that answer, I'll courier it over. Uh, in the Tour de France, what colour jersey is given to the fastest overall rider that's under the age of 25? It's a white jersey. White jersey. Did you know that one? Uh, in Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, what was the real name of the artful dodger? It is Jack Dawkins. Charlie Chaplin uh, got his feet insured quite severely. So there you go. Charlie Chaplin got his feet insured uh, for a lot of money. The name of the pet dog in Frasier is Eddie. Uh, Vine Street, Marlborough Street, Bow Street are all orange. Uh, and true or false, the distance as the crow flies between Paris and Amsterdam is greater than the distance between London and John O'Groats. It is false. Uh, because Paris to Amsterdam, as the crow flies, is approximately 266 miles. But Land's End to John O'Groats is roughly 603 miles. So well done if you got that right. Right, words. Uh, if someone is capernoited, they are B, slightly drunk. Slightly drunk. B, slightly drunk. If something is fabiform, it is A, something that is shaped like a bean. Three, what is a yaffingale? It is B, a green woodpecker. Uh, four, if something is gentacular, it is C, something relating to breakfast. Uh, five, what is a brack? Um, a brack, brack. Um, a, female hunting hound it is. So A, a female hunting hound. C, uh, six, if something is sacular, it is C, something that is sack-like. Something that is sack-like, number six. Uh, seven, what is a skippet? The answer is A, a small round box to preserve a document or a seal. Did you know that one? That was A. Number eight, what is Mariology the study of? Uh, the answer is B. Mariology is the study of the Virgin Mary. There you go. Uh, B, uh, sorry, number nine, what is a pabouche? A pabouche is C. It's a slipper or a soft shoe. And number 10, what is a quack salver? Uh, it is A, someone who falsely claims to have medical skills. So I, to my reckoning, I think there is 35 points up for grabs so far. So I'm expecting scores of 50 or more so far. Uh, <laughs> that'll, that'll be doing well. Uh, anyway, add up your scores. Tell me your team names, email your scores so far. Let's see how you're doing. Uh, we'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Uh, don't forget, you can email at chrissybenson at hotmail.co.uk. Um, we're back here on Wednesday night, of course, with the smartphone quiz. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, this is where you'll find the interactive quiz on a Wednesday night and loads of other stuff as well. Have a look at uh, Chris and Eric's Bradford City blogs. Eric told me to say that. Have a look at the football blogs we did earlier in the season uh, and Eric's football simulator as well, which he had fun doing. Uh, Amy Walsh says, hi, the Walkers. Yes, Amy and Andy are playing, enjoying a bottle of bud and a glass of wine thanks to Asda Home Delivery. Ha, ha. 
Home delivery. Hey, aren't you lucky? Right, mind you, kids got woke up yesterday by an Asda home delivery. I think it arrived over the road just after six in the morning. I thought that was a that was an early slot. So, Amy and Andy, hello to you. You're doing well. I, I've just got a cup of tea tonight, but I might have one in a bit. Hmm. Right. Uh, any scores coming in? Uh, Amanda, Knowles Lane, nine, nine points so far. Do you know what, Amanda? You're winning because we haven't had any other scores in so far. Oh, Sarah Woodall. Let's see what score Sarah's got. Uh, Mark got 21. Sarah got 15. Oh, dear. No, there's no dear about it. It's taking part that counts. That's all that matters, isn't it? As long as you're enjoying it. If you had your two scores together anyway, you'd be on 36 out of 35, wouldn't you? So, um Dan and John say they're up to 18 up to now. Well, I tell you, you're only, you're only three off the lead uh, over there in Crossings, aren't you? Uh, Helen Walker. Oh, the scores are coming in. Millie is on 18. Mark is on 18. And Helen is on 21. Uh, Amy and Andy, always happy to deliver. So uh, th there's two teams on 21. Mark Woodall and... Uh, Helen as well at Low Moor. Richard Ryan says uh, the Whimsy Wobblers are on 19 points. Very close quiz tonight. Very close quiz. Um, Mark Walker says, Lucky, did you say, Chris? I dropped it off for him. Ah, did you? I see. As the delivery. We haven't had home delivery for ages. Um, um, hi from Astley. Mark and Mindy only joined you at 9.15. We've got 17, mum and dad. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Uh, and I say say this mum and dad, what you can do is you can rewind the quiz. Go back to the beginning so you didn't hear the answer. Oh, you've heard the answers now. I was going to say you could go back to the beginning and just watch it on a delay, a bit like plus one if you like. But if you've heard the answers, you can't really do that. Now. But I'll, I will give you 17 points, Mark and Mindy. And there's still time for you to catch up. Oh, you're enjoying yourselves. Have a, have a sherry. Uh, Amy Walsh says she's got 19. Very good score. Uh, oh, but the leader so far has just come in. Alex Hyman says, hi, Chris, 25 so far. A shout out to my wife, Danny, for baking a lovely lemon drizzle cake today. Oh, yeah, lemon drizzle cake. Oh, that might be an idea for tomorrow, that lemon drizzle cake. Was it nice? Send us all a piece, uh, Alex, through the power of YouTube. Uh, Danny, uh, there you go. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, 25 then, uh, Alex Hyman's team, Alex and Danny winning at the moment. Oh, there's more scores coming in, cracky. Loads of play people playing. Louise Callahan says, Louise and Fred on 23 over in Scarborough. Alex has given up teenagers. 23 though, second place. Um, Anne Marie Craven. Oh, oh, there's two scores coming in. Anne Marie Craven at Eric's Dominoes. Uh, they're on 20 points so far. Um, I'm writing all these down. So many teams tonight. Brilliant turnout. Uh, Katie Deakin says, hi, Chris. Thanks for organising the quiz. So far, we're in 19 out of 35. We did very well in the first round, and then it went all downhill. Don't worry. Long way to go. So, um, Katie Deakin, 19 out of 35. So, all right. Winners at the minute, Alex and Danny. Give them a round of applause so far. But that can all change. So, uh, we'll do children's entertainment next. Five questions on children's entertainment. Uh, I think it's quite an easy round, this one, but we'll see. Uh, so let's begin. Eyes down. Quiz continues. Question number one. What type of animal is Beatrix Potter's Miss Moppet? So what type of animal is Beatrix, Beatrix Potter's Miss Moppet? That is number one. Hope you're enjoying the pen and paper quiz. Uh, let me know if you want it to carry on next week. And, of course, we'll be back on Wednesday with the smartphone quiz as well. Promise you, 8 o'clock. Don't miss it. Spread the word, won't you? Uh, so that was number one. What type of animal is Beatrix Potter's Miss Moppet? Question number two. If you like your 80s cartoons, you'll probably know this one. Who lived at 29 Acacia Road, Nutty Town? So who lived at 29 Acacia Road, Nutty Town? That is number two. 29 Acacia Road, Nutty Town. Some really good scores tonight. Um, we'll do number three. Number three. In a traditional Punch and Judy show, what is the name of Mr. Punch's dog? So in a traditional Punch and Judy show, what is the name of Mr. Punch's dog? All right. So that's number three. Two to go in this round, which we're calling Children's Entertainment. All right. Uh, number four. Teletubbies. Well, which of the Teletubbies was green? 
which of the Teletubbies was green? That's your penultimate question in children's entertainment. So which of the Teletubbies was green? All right. Number five. The CBB show about a small girl who lives with her family on the fictitious and remote Scottish island of Struay is known as Katie Watt. So the CBB show about a small girl who lives with her family on the fictitious and remote Scottish island of Struay is known as Katie Watt. The programme is Katie something. What's it called? So that's your fifth one in children's entertainment. I think we're going to move on to literature next. Literature coming up next. Um, oh, we have another score coming in. Uh, so for you, it says Moorside Massive, Sophie and Hell's 19 points. Uh, good score. Not the best, not the, not the worst. Absolutely. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, good turnout tonight. The word is spreading about these Sunday night quizzes. You can't beat, you can't beat a bit of bully. Right. Round uh, next round then is literature. Now listen carefully. I want to know in which book did these characters first appear? All right. So in which book did these characters first appear? All right. Five questions. Question number one. Robert Langdon. Robert Langdon. Which book did Robert Langdon first appear in? Okay. You happy with that one? Number two, Rhett Butler. Number two, Rhett Butler. So number two, Rhett Butler. We might do some music next. We might do a bit of a now music question out of the loft coming up for you next uh, to vary it up a bit. Uh, so Rhett Butler was number two. Number three, which book, which book, not film, which book did the character James Bond first appearing which book did the character james bond first appear in all right time for the cheese nibble um, 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 um. why is it moorish it's like pringles isn't it? Like, would you open a packet isn't it um number four which book did the character miss marple first appear in which book did the character miss marple first appear in all right. And number five, which character, sorry, which book did the character Lisbeth Salander first appear in? That's Lisbeth, L-I-S-B-E-T-H, Lisbeth Salander. Which book did that character first appear in? All right. So that is that round. I'm just going to be 30 seconds because I need a prop. I need a prop for the next round. I need a prop. I'm back. I'm back. Right. It is now time for the music round. OK, so uh, I've got a now music card out of the loft. You like that? A bit of now music. So I have got here five questions on different types of different ages of music. <laughs> but quite funny, the last one is a charade <laughs> that I've got to work, I've got to act out. So hence why I just went to go to prop. So the fifth one is a charade that I will try and act out a song. <laughs> this will be fun with what your answers will be. Don't forget you can email me tonight at chrisbenson at hotmail.co.uk. You can also donate if you wish towards uh, any of the charities that, that we've raised money for so far. Just give me.com forward slash chris and Eric quiz night or Chris Nevick, Chris Nevick, two, three, four, or five. And you can also already, if you wish, donate to Chris Nevick, Quiz Night 6 on there, which is sell for Wednesday. This Wednesday, we're raising money for Mind. So spread the word, brilliant fundraising causes this week. Right, question number one, then in music. And number one is to do with the 1980s. Number one, 1980s. Which political figure was the subject of U2's 1984 song, Pride in the name of love. So which political figure was the subject of U2's 1984 song, Pride in the name of love? That's number one. All right. 
Next one, number two. Number two, okay. In 1970, who wrote and recorded the original version of Father and Son, which became a number one in 1995 for Boyzone? So in 1970, who wrote and recorded the original version of Father and Son, which became a number one in 1995 for Boyzone? All right. You feeling confident still? Question number three. It's a 21st century music question, this one, all right? Who had a hit in 2015 with the song Love Yourself? So question number three, who had a hit in 2015 with the song Love Yourself? That's number three. Two more in now music to go. All right. Uh, number four. Complete the title of Jamelia's top 10 hit from 2006. Beware of, I'll give you a clue, it's an animal. It's an animal. So complete the title of Jamelia's top 10 hit from 2006. Beware of, and there's an animal in the, uh, the title, so beware of what? Right, uh, and then I've got to do a charade now. <laughs> which is hard when you've got a webcam, so I'll try. Um, oh, so you've got to guess what song I am trying to act out for number five. It's a charade this, uh, on live stream. All right, so I have with me. Oh, I wonder what that is. <laughs> if I do a lot dodgy, I don't know what. Oh, it could be like that, I suppose. could be like that. It could be like that, couldn't it? Oh, I wonder what this is. What I, that's the charade. That's as good as I can do it. What charade was that for? Anyway, there you go. So I'll let you have a guess at that. Uh, I can't really do that any better. So there you go. What was that the charade to? Uh, I hope you've got that right after that effort. Uh, right, one more round. One more round, then we're going to swap sheets for the final time. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, spread the word. Um, as I say, Wednesday, we'll be back with a smartphone quiz. Uh, keep your emails coming. One more round to get in touch. And, of course, at the end, let us know your scores as well. We'd love to get in touch. Um, right. On to sport. This was already written before Eric decided to do his football questions. So I, th I think you'll be all right. You just might need to think on some of them, but I think you'll be all right. Five questions. On sport. Okay. So good luck, everyone. Think carefully. All right. Number one, in a game of snooker, how many balls in total are used? Now, let me, uh, it's not including the white. I think I'll just check that. It is including the white. It is including the white. Yes, it is including the white, the answer. There you go. So I want the answer including the white. In a game of snooker, how many balls in total are used? Yeah, my answer includes the white. So how many are used? All right. So how many balls in total are used in snooker? That's number one. Number two, on a dartboard, which two numbers are halfway down the board? So I want the number that's kind of at three o'clock, and I want the number that's around about nine o'clock. All right. So on a dartboard, which two numbers are halfway down the board, i.e. the one that's at three o'clock and the one that's at nine o'clock? What numbers are they? That's your second one. All right. Three more to go. Who's going to be our champions this week? Uh, if you like it, spread the word. Um, number three, how many teams compete in the Football Premier League? So how many teams compete in the football premier league all right two more two more uh right number four to the nearest five thousand how many seats does the new wembley stadium have so to the nearest five thousand how many seats does the new wembley stadium have all right. 
That's your penultimate question of the quiz time. All right. Uh, and number five, in which year did Red Rum win his first Grand National? There's a good question, isn't it? Because he won it three times. But when was the first time he won it? So in which year did Red Rum win his first Grand National? All right. That's your fifth question. Uh, I'm going to give you a minute or so to just check your answers and then we'll mark the second half of the quiz. Get in touch. Hope you've enjoyed it. Chrissy Benson at hotmail.co.uk. And if you're playing um, on demand and watching it delayed, get in touch as well. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves tonight. And if you are watching it on demand, we'll do a smartphone quiz Wednesday nights, 8 o'clock with my son Eric as well. You will love it. Uh, right all the way through isolation. And when we're out of isolation, come down to the Chapel House on a Monday night uh, where I'll be hosting the quiz there. Uh, you can't beat it. Brilliant quiz. Um, okay. Are we, all, are we all ready? I think we're all ready, aren't we? Should we do, should we do the answers? Why not? 10 to 10. Um, children's entertainment then for you now. Ready? Let's do it. What type of animal is Beatrix Potter's Miss Moppet? It is, of course, a kitten. That's right. Uh, number two, who lived at 29 Acacia Road, Nutty Town? Banana Man. Of course, his first name was. And Marie and Preston, you should know that. His first name was Eric. Um, number three, in a traditional Punch and Judy show, what is the name of Mr. Punch's dog? It is Toby. Toby. Which of the Teletubbies was green? It was Dipsy. Number five, the CBB show about a small girl who lives with her family on the fictitious remote Scottish island of Struay is known as Katie Morag. Katie Morag was the answer there. Uh, right, literature. In which book did these characters first appear? Uh, number one, Robert Langdon first appeared in... I reckon a few of you all said The Da Vinci Code, and it was wrong. It was Angels and Demons was the answer that uh, I was looking for. Angels and Demons. Number two, Rhett Butler first appeared in Gone With The Wind. Wasn't that written by Margaret? Was it Margaret Mitchell? I think off the top of my head. I think it was Margaret Mitchell. Gone With The Wind, the film, was made in 1939. Of course, it was at the cinema for absolute years. But here's a quiz trivia one uh, that you might want to know and jot down it wasn't on british television until 1981 because uh they wouldn't they wouldn't allow it to be because it was still making money at the cinema so the first time it was shown on television was on boxing day 1981 when i was just three days old and they showed it over two nights on bbc one they showed the first half after the mike yarwood Christmas show on Boxing Day 1981 and then they showed the second half the day after they split it into two halves so that was the first time it was allowed on television and they paid an absolute fortune um, number three James Bond the first James Bond book um, by Ian Fleming was Casino Royale did you know that one uh, number four the first Miss Marple uh, book was Murder at the Vicarage Murder at the Vicarage was the answer we're looking for there. Uh, Elizabeth Salander uh, first appeared in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was the answer we're looking for there. All right. Uh, now music answers then coming up for you now. Which political figure was the subject of U2's 1984 single Pride in the Name of Love? It was Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. You could have said as well. Martin Luther King A would have got you the point. Uh, 1970, who wrote and recorded the original version of Father and Son, uh, which became a number one for Boys Own? It was Cat Stevens, who had a hit in 2015 with the song Love Yourself, Justin Bieber. Did you know that one, Justin Bieber? Complete the title of Jamelia's top 10 hit from 2006, Beware of the Dog. Beware of the Dog. And the song I was trying to do, it could have been like... Could have been like that, or pump, well, pump up the jam, pump it up. Uh, that was a jar of jam, pump up the jam. Uh, if anyone got it, well, great. If you didn't, I'm sorry, we'll maybe try another charade next week. Anyway, that was the Now Music round. Uh, sport then coming up for you. So there's 30 points up for grabs in this second half. Uh, in a game of snooker, how many balls in total are used? Well, the answer is 22. 15 reds and yellow, green, brown, blue, pink and black, and the white, of course, the cue ball, which makes 22. On a dartboard, which two numbers are halfway down the board at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock? 6 and 11. 
Six and 11 was the answers there. How many teams compete in the Football Premier League? Well, none at the minute. We're in isolation. But when they normally play, it's 20. 20 is the right answer. And for those football fans out there, you might be interested to know that Obviously, ITV uh, are running out of programmes because they're repeating the 1987 FA Cup final next Saturday tea time. Honestly, look in the listings with the original uh, Saint and Greaves intros and everything. Five o'clock Tottenham and Co- uh, Tottenham and Coventry from 1987 next Saturday. I kid you not. Have a look. Um, number four. To the nearest 5,000, how many seats does the new Wembley Stadium have? Uh, 90,000, apparently. 90,000. Number five, in which year did Red Rum win his first Grand National? The answer was 1973. There you go, 1973. So, and I believe the last time when it was Ju- Silver Jubilee year, which was 1977. My favourite Grand National race is 1967. And if you've never seen that race, when you've finished on here, just go on YouTube it straight away and spend 10 minutes because it's my absolute favourite race. I mean, I mean for, for the first lap, it's a normal Grand National. Uh, and then in the second half, most of the horses just fall over. There's a horse, stray horse and all the other horses clash into it. And then there's this one straggler at the back. I think it was going to be 200 to one at the start. And it just jumps over. The only one that does. Fine Avon went on to just about hang on to win the race. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant race. Have a look at that, the 1967 Grand National. Right, email your scores and your team names over, and we'll see who's won tonight. You can email them to chrisccbenson at hotmail.co.uk. We'll hang on and see uh, what scores we get through. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed the quiz, you can donate at www.justgiving.com forward slash Chris and Eric Quiz Night 5 or Quiz Night 6, whatever you want to do, whatever you've got, uh, will all be just appreciated. Uh, You've all been wonderful with your donations during isolation as well i think we've raised over 800 pounds uh in just over the last month which i think we can get it to a thousand on wednesday i really do uh so and if you want to do a pen and paper quiz again drop me an email let me know uh if there's demand and the, the audience has got up for it this week so it suggests that there is demand for it so send your scores over and we'll find out who has won tonight uh and don't forget as well to check out my show reel on youtube as well if you know anyone that needs a host for events when we're all out of here point them in my direction of the channel and there's a show reel on there as well showcasing some of the clips uh, of my work why not tell them to spread the word uh right Anne and john final score 23 at crossens beach were well, you winning at the minute it's the first score in um richard ryan Wibsy wobblers our total is 24 oh dear the whiskey has struck us down well, you can't blame the whiskey, but have another one now just to, you know, commiserate. That's that's a good idea, isn't it? My bottle of Deanston's empty, Richard. What am I going to do? Uh, Helen Walker, uh, Millie got 30 out of 55. Mark got 31 and Helen got 35. So uh, the Walkers doing really well. Thank you always for your support. 35 is the highest score so far. Alex Hyman, Alex and Danny. Uh, Alex got 41, Chris. Enjoyed it. You're very welcome, Alex. Thank you for playing and join us on Wednesday if you can. Um, maybe we should do an Only Fools round next week. Uh, Knowles Lane, uh, Amanda got 30. Hi, Amanda. Hope you're all okay there. 30 is a very respectable score. Uh, Pat and Pops, let's have a look. Mum and Dad really enjoyed the quiz. Our final score is 32. It's not a winner, Mum and Dad, admittedly, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's have a look. Sarah Woodall says mark 33 uh sarah 25 uh so alex and danny are way in front of the minute can anyone catch them that's the emails are still still coming through louise callahan says louise and friend in scarborough finished on 37 thanks for the question you're welcome you're welcome you absolutely welcome uh, and take care in scarborough won't you um so I think there might be a couple more scores. If there's any more scores, well, hang on just a minute. You can email chrisccbenson at hotmail.co.uk. Amory, Sophie, you're going to let us know your scores. Oh, Amy Walsh says, 27. It was a shocking second half apart from sport. Uh, screw the walkers. <laughs> See you Wednesday. Thanks, Chris. Um, Amanda Rayner says, a uh, week after next, we could raise money for Bradford Royal Children's Ward. Um, well, we raised money for Bradford Hospitals NHS Trust a few weeks ago. So... We will. We do have quite a few lined up. We've already done Bradford Hospitals a few weeks ago, but we will try and fit in as many as we can during isolation, Amanda. Um, Anne-Marie Craven says, 
32 for Eric's Dominoes. Uh, I was at the 1987 Cup final. Spoiler, my team Spurs lost 3-2. Yeah, I did I did Google the score earlier, actually. I did. But, yeah, so it looks like there's plenty of goals. Um, Eric's Dominoes, good score indeed. I think that's all the scores in a part. Sophie, how did you get on? Uh, but, anyway, the winners, I'm going to presume, with 41 points, is Alex and Danny. Give him a round of applause. Very good score indeed. Um, Anyway, you don't forget you can email before Wednesday. Spread the word about the uh, interactive smartphone quiz on Wednesday night. Uh, and thank you all for playing once again. Take care. Stay safe. Look after each other. And I'll see you on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. All right. Bye for now.